time to do the first video of the Twitter clone with GraphQL and React Native. So for this video, uh, that's going to be the like the kind of preface. So this is where we're going to uh, configure all the basic server to make it run. And after that, we're going to start to uh, learn. <laughs> so, uh, on, so here I'm going to just tell you how I'm going to manage this tutorial now. This is going to be my new, uh, my new version of uh, teaching. So what I'm going to do, I do, it's here inside the, the, the repo. I'm going to have every uh, episode going to have its own branch. So this way, it's easy for you to, uh, to get the, like the setup and uh, know where at the end of the video you just watch where you should be and like that. So the master is going to be the, the, the final project so with everything inside. And the, the, like uh, each episode is going to have uh, the place where I finish it. So I push it right after the video. So here what I do, it's I create a, inside the readme, I, I, I create like everything I, we're gonna do. So I write it and um, here, please, uh, in my English, it's not perfect. So uh, if you think you can do better, uh, please uh, do a pull request and I'm gonna accept that at 100%. It's I, I really maybe gonna need L for the English part. So thank you for this. So here, uh, we're gonna go op over the pre uh, wiki for this video. So what we, you need to, uh, to do and know, it's to add MongoDB install, in, uh, in, install React Native and Node.js. So I don't go over that. Find on Google, you're gonna have seen so many tutorial about set up this uh, tool, that's it. After that, I want you to have an understanding, basic understanding on MongoDB, Node.js, React Native, and a bit of GraphQL. When I mean a bit, I just want you to at least understand what is GraphQL, so what, that do and why everyone <laughs> love it and that's it, nothing more and maybe like a bit about query and resolver but uh, it's okay if you don't after that i want you to know some part about websocket because we're gonna have real time for the, the favorite and uh, add a new uh, tweet and be patient with me so <laughs> so here as you can see i have put everything in the part one but this part gonna be break in two parts the part uh, i'm gonna say part zero it's gonna be uh, the basic setup and uh, the part one is gonna be what we're gonna start with GraphQL. So uh, it's gonna be the time to start. Right. So now here, what we need to do first, create a folder, that's it. <laughs> and after that, inside this one, you need to create two folder. One is gonna be server. So we're gonna stop here for now. So create a folder called server, CD inside this one. After that here, open it in your uh, text editor. After that, create a git ignore file, put no module inside. We don't want to push it to uh, GitHub. And after that, run the command uh, yarn init or npm init and click enter until the end. Nothing more. After that here, what we need to run GraphQL with Node.js, it's I'm gonna make use of Express. This is the framework the most used almost. So we're gonna add three package here. Express, body parser, cross end. Like I say, I want you to have some basic learning about uh, Node.js. So Express, it's the it's going to be the, like the framework, kind of framework for the Node.js. Body parser, we need that to parse the JSON uh, format for GraphQL, for the post. And finally, cross env, it's for having environment variable working for the Windows user. Nothing more. After that, create a folder inside the root called source. And be sure you are inside server first. So that I create a file called index.js. Here, we're gonna set up the basic Express server. So ex ex import Express, import body parser from body parser. Here, create uh, a nap instance of Express.js. So const app equal Express. After that, we're gonna say which part we want the Express server to run. So process that end that node, uh, not node, but port, or 3000. So for this line, we don't understand that. When you push to Heroku, something like that, DigitalOcean, they're gonna use the environment port. If not, here what we say, it's, uh, we say 2000. So if this one is undefined or null, we're gonna use 3000. Here, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna put body parser, uh, that JSON middleware, inside my app, so this is how you do this in, in, uh, 
in uh, Express how to put middleware. And here, finally, we're going to go to a pretty simple app listen part. Here we have a callback where we receive an error. If we have an error, we're going to console error this error. Else, we're going to console log app listen to port. And here we're gonna put the variable port right there. So I hope you understand the import from it, this stuff. I'm gonna write in ES6, ES7 feature. I'm gonna make use of all the latest JavaScript, who I think make the language much more awesome. So if you don't understand this part, it's like the require. So that's it. Here now, inside package.json, we're gonna create a new script where we're gonna make use of the cross end. So cross end node nth equal dev. Cross end, what is that? Like I told you, it's for make use of the node environment, make it easy for the Windows user to add a, a, an environment variable. Because in Mac, we have all that by default almost. And here we're gonna say node source.index.js. So here I want to start my, um, my project with node, my index.js inside source and inside environment node nth. So now if I run yarn dev, Oh my God, what just happening here? Yeah, you see, uh, Unispectic token import. Uh, Node.js right now don't really understand everything about the, uh, the like uh, ES7 stuff, ES6, so he don't understand again the import, he just understand the require, and they uh, don't want to go too much in this topic, but this is what that means. So here, we're gonna install Babel to make it work. So what we need to make it work, it's we're gonna need Babel CLI, which is the tool who run the Babel, we're going to make use of Babel preset in env, who it's the way to say, I want to run on maybe like Node.js 6.10, so give me everything I need to run on this one. And Babel plugin transform object res spread here, it's just for having the spread operator working. And don't forget to install that in dev dependency. So I installed this, after that I'm going to go there, and I'm going to copy paste what I have here, just to make it quicker for us. So what we need to do here is we're going to create a new file and we're going to say here babel.rc We're going to paste it. For the one who have watched other videos from me, it's the my basic stuff. Here I say I want to run on 6.10 and I put my plugin. Nothing more here. Pretty simple. Now here I want to run this stuff. So here what I'm going to add is I'm going to just add babel node right there. So if I do this and I run yarn there, now what's gonna happen? Now I get the... Uh, I cannot, oh, I think it's uh, that. Now the app is running. App listen to 3000, we are good to go. We just built an awesome app, we good, no? I mean, uh, I'm, I'm joking, so. Here what, I, what happened, it's now that's work. So Babel, take the code here and make it uh, looks what Node.js wanted it to see. So we're gonna make it uh, like the require here and uh, everything gonna be the version, uh, what you need to, to read from 6.10. Perfect, now I save. Oh shit. If I do some change here, example, I do this and I save, nothing happened. What I need, I need Node.1 for that. Node.1, we're gonna make, finally, uh, the code rerun on change. Yarn add the Node.1 in dev dependency. Perfect, go back in package.json, here put nomon, and we say exec, and now if I save it and I rerun your in there, what happened? Still work. Oh yeah, but the thing is, sorry, I have another terminal open with the same. So now I can do this, your in dev, and now, now it's work, but now if I save, look, it restart, perfect. So here if I change that to 3001, now the year is gonna be 2001. Perfect. Basic Express setup, done. Time to do the MongoDB. Folder config right there in source. We're gonna create a new file called constants, uh, constants.js. In this one, we're gonna put two constants for now. Import default port. So here we're gonna put the process end port. So the same thing we have in the other ones, we're gonna clean the code. After that, here we're gonna say db.url. And I'm gonna say uh, inside string mongo db localhost 
And now which database I want it, I'm gonna say tweet development. Like that. Now, inside my config, I'm gonna create another file called db.js. But now I'm gonna make use of mongoose to, for that. So here is gonna be pretty simple. I'm gonna say add the mongoose, uh, not the mongoose. So mongoose is the ORM who gonna talk to the MongoDB directly. So I don't need to make this uh, thing by myself. And that's good. And they have a really good API uh, to make it work. So here we're gonna import mongoose from mongoose. After that, I'm gonna import my constant uh, object from constant.js. Here we're gonna say mongoose that promises equal uh, global promises. So finally, you know what? I'm gonna go to the here and I'm gonna copy paste this line right there for now. I'm gonna tell you what that do. It's gonna be better for you. Here we need that because we're gonna get an error about the deprecation about promises. After that here, uh, what we say is I want to have the debug on. So what I mean is you're gonna see that in the next uh, episode. It's finally, we're gonna see every time we insert, create, delete, update, whatever, in the DB, we're gonna see the process in the DB. Here after that, I say mongoose connect. So I'm gonna try an error. That's gonna be more about testing. So I just put that because I put this thing every time. And here I say connect with my constant DB URL with this URL right there. If it's if it don't connect, I'm gonna try to create a connection. And finally, here I say use Mongo client because Mon now Mongo ask for this. Perfect. Now how can I get this connection? So uh, just to be sure here, if everything's work, I'm gonna see MongoDB running. So now nothing happened here because now I'm gonna need to import this MongoDB here. I'm gonna say import from uh, config. DB like that, and now if everything is work, boom, MongoDB running, perfect. So now we just set up MongoDB Express. So now time to do something else. We're gonna install ESLint. So that's why you see me having this ESLint no console stuff here. Really easy, what is ESLint? Again, I have another video where I talk about that. It's just a way to see your error. Really easy, yarn add dash D ESLint. Uh, ESLIN, ESLIN config, so this is my configuration. You don't need, really need to follow this one if you don't. I'm gonna add prettier already and ESLIN config prettier. I'm gonna make a video about that only, uh, but they are pretty simple to understand. Finally, it's just about like, uh, I'm really a, a good code uh, looking uh, addict. So here I'm gonna say uh, extend. It's gonna be an array where I'm gonna put my uh, my configuration, so equimper and prettier here. So for the one who don't understand this part, finally, it's always the latest uh, term after ESN configuration when you extend. So now, if everything is work, I'm gonna close all my windows by doing command K, command W, uh, command K W like that. And now, if I go to my index.js, now I, I get some error. We say unexpected console statement. So my ESN here just say a warning, so that's why it's green, and it say, hey, this thing here. Yeah, I don't want it to have, to have this in production. So that's why I put the console log. So for now, the way to remove it, it's I'm gonna say here at the top, really important to have only one star from each side. I'm gonna say ESN disable. If I do this, I disable everything, but I want to still have it work. So I'm just gonna say no console. So finally, the error message. If you don't know where to search for this, you save here. Uh, one sec, I'm gonna just take everything. Now you see the error right there, it say no console. Perfect, so now I can check and that's it. Now that's work and why it's awesome, yes, then if I do this. Oh, what is that? You're unable to resolve path to module, nothing. <laughs> you see, so yes, then gonna be really there to help me to give you the code. So when I do some typo, that's gonna be there for me. <clears throat> and after that, now here, what we uh, what we um, gonna go? It's now I'm gonna just uh, finally add the prettier on it. So what it's prettier? It's a way to make all your code really uh, pretty. So here, prettier. We're gonna say I want every quote in my app to be single quote. And after that, I'm gonna say print width. 
to be uh, 80. So I mean the, the, the width from the left to the right, 80. So the, this is the width of the screen. I'm gonna say I want to have a trilling comma. So this is the last uh, comma at the end of each uh, stuff. Here I'm gonna say I want to have a, to, to see every uh, file will have been right. And here inside quotes, single quotes, because we are in double quote, I'm gonna say source uh, two star slash dot GS. So every file, JavaScript file inside source. So now what I'm gonna show you, it's example, if I do something like that, someone gave you code and look like this thing, really bad. But now if I run Yon PDR, look at this, boom, everything is perfect for us. Here, if I do like something like that, we have too much space, you run PDR, boom, that came back where they are. Last thing. I have double quotes here, someone give you code, give you double code, you run pretty hard, boom, single quote. That's it. So we just set up the basic server for make us the, the app working. Next one, we're gonna go over the installation of the GraphQL server on this. We're gonna set up the first uh, collection uh, called Tweet because we built Twitter, so uh, <laughs> yes, I find a good name. And we're gonna go over making some mocks with fakers with that and make the first uh, query with GraphQL. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, part zero finally, this preface. So we talk later. Bye.